I don't know why they use that term. It's a really stupid term. It's a rebuilt car, all right? If you guys wanna see this little area right here, you see that little wealth? That's why it was salvaged. starting the video with one downpipe installed. Now, I don't really gotta bore you guys. I'm not a technician, I'm not a superstar mechanic like Andy or some of the guys that used to be here working at my shop, but I do know how to take bolts off and put bolts on. And well, that's, I guess, good enough for a rift downpipe and rear exit install. Down below, you see the large, almost dual catalytic converter system from the original McLaren uh, downpipes. Uh, it's very, very big and you can see the difference now. Uh, in here, we've got just a clean catless race pipe. It's gonna make the sound of this McLaren incredible. Problem with turbo cars is definitely part of the, the sacrifice of emotion you get from the way they sound. And it's really funny because the emission system is pretty much 99% of the problem. Now, this is a four liter twin turbo V8. This thing screams. I think it's got an 8,000 RPM red line. It is an amazing car. Now, if you take these stock crappy emissions related systems off and put the Rift system on, I mean, this will be the first time I've heard the stainless steel version, but wow, does it transform it. I mean, it makes tons of extra power. Uh, I think it actually makes over like a 10% increase in power with the full system. And uh, that's good for over 70 horsepower, which, you know, don't quote me on that because, you know, I'm not a mathematician or anything. But at the same time, this is pretty good. So I've got one in, one coming out. I have a small issue down here. Um, that bolt down there is, uh, let's see if you can see it. It's just a pain in the ass. Well, just to put it frank, uh, I've got all three out on the other side. And uh, this side here is relatively easier because the this pipe here runs above it and you can kind of get down there below it. So I didn't have to remove the intake pipe on that side, but to the McLaren rebuild, I've got the majority of the lines back on. Uh, I've reinstalled the, uh, the shock lines, the compression and the rebound lines here, and I've reinstalled these uh, secondary air injection pumps with um, the block right here for the gearbox to the air brake. Um, I'm just gonna bolt, I had to keep this open because the lines are going through here, kind of run through the air brake and I have to take that off, put that back on. So I'm gonna bolt the air brake on here next and then I'm gonna put that shield right here after I get this down pipe in. I can then put the body over there back on and well, <sighs> start it, I think. I'm like 99% sure I'm ready to start. Uh, I've got all the stuff done. I've changed the inertia switch, which is, this thing's pretty cool. I, I, I don't know what they're called anymore, but they're basically called inertia switches back in the day. When the car gets into a collision, whether it's rear-ended, whether it flips over anything, this little thing here sparks and creates like a little bomb and it cuts this fuse right down the middle, boom. And that's the main power of the car. So you don't have to worry about the car catching fire for from the electrical system if you get into an accident. Now it could catch fire from the fuel or many other ways, but this here prevents a lot of deadly situations. I do have an update on the Tesla door. Uh, I've got the new frame put in, both new shocks put in, all the bracketry, the uh, I don't know, rubber shit right here put in and I'm ready to put the door on the car. I just have to replace the two brackets that are over there on the actual Tesla itself, which is not an easy task. That's gonna be harder than everything I've done here today because I've gotta pull the entire headliner apart. It is just a nightmare. I'm dreading it so bad. I almost wanna go buy Denise a new car because I do not wanna do it. And wow, does it, it is hot and it is not fun to take apart a Tesla inside because you can't turn the air conditioning on because you can't drive. And actually, ironically, Denise's air conditioner went out at the same time the door happened. So I don't really know if that was a cause and effect or something, but after I get the door put back on, I've got to take the damn thing to Tesla and get the AC work. So it is going to be a hot one tomorrow. Let me tell you, it's going to be like over 103 degrees and uh, we do not actually have air conditioning in our shop. Okay, listen, if you guys are kids, 
Close yours. That pipe. Okay, we're back. These AC lines right here are really in the way. And it is really hard because you sneak them down this way. And in these lines, you know, you don't want to disconnect them because then you got to like recharge the AC. It just, it's just a headache, you know, and it barely sneaks by. Like you could just, just get it right, you know? And holy crap, man. It, the problem is, is it's, it's this little edge right here, both sides. It just thickens it just enough. You see how I just bent it just a little bit? It sneaks right out. Man, does that suck. But that is not the case on the Rift exhaust. The Rift engineered properly. I'm not saying McLaren's not, but McLaren doesn't care when they take the car apart. I do, okay? I do. Two on the salvage McLaren build. It, why did I say salvage? It's not salvage. I don't know why they use that term. It's a really stupid term. It's a rebuilt car, all right? If you guys wanna see this little area right here, you see that little welt? That's why it was salvaged, salvaged. Uh, anyways, that was a simple fix. And uh, you know, I think this car would have been uh, very fixable. I, I feel like uh, all cars in this category are very fixable. So if you purchase a car of this caliber, um, they're all carbon monocoques. It's not like the old days where they're on these huge chassis and they just bend up and you just can't fix them anymore. I don't know, why am I ranting? Why did I start this video like this? It doesn't even make any sense. My point is, is we got the downpipes installed, okay? So the uh, stainless steel downpipes looking super fresh. Got this heat shielding on here. Uh, O2 sensors back in. Look at how it's so shiny. Love the quality of the Rift exhaust. You just can't get better than that, right? And for the 40% off, I like this. I really do. I think, for all, honestly, Andy, I think you'd agree with me. Stainless steel is probably a better option than titanium. I don't know from a Just say yes. Yes. All right, all right, see, he agrees with me. Uh, underneath the car, you guys can see, it's uh, we're gonna do the oil change. You got uh, all the drain plugs here with all the new crush washers going on it. I'm gonna do that real quick. Uh, I, it, there was really nothing to clean. The car's damn brand new. Um, let's see over here. You can see this one. I hate this pipe, I hate this side, I hate this line, I hate this line. Um, there's really no reason for us to have air conditioning in this car because these lines should have gone a different way so you can get this damn down pipe out. But it is what it is, they're there. We've got uh, pretty much fenders to put on, the other air box, the other air brake, and we're gonna be pretty much ready to start. I don't really see this taking longer than the next couple of hours. I probably have it running by the end of the day. Okay, I'm taking a break from uh, Taking a break from fixing the 720. I'm gonna jump in the 570 if I can figure out how to open the door. I'm gonna go check out the helicopter. Oh, crap, that was that was dangerous. Oh, um, interior's done. I think it's actually put in. I got a picture of it yesterday out of the helicopter and now it's probably inside at this point right now. So I'm gonna take the 570. I'm gonna drive up there and check it out. I'm gonna stop by the house on the way there because I have a feeling that there's some construction going on in my house too. I had the flooring taken up, which maybe at this point probably wasn't a good idea. This is a pretty good sign. Look at all that right there. That's trash. Yeah, garage is looking like crap. You know, I, I follow I follow a really cool um, garage like Instagram page from LA and they actually follow me back. I don't know. They have some super sick garages. I really, really want to do something really nice in here because eventually I'm gonna have my own cars stored at my own house, 
right? Because right now I just drive like whatever. I mean, today I drove the 570, but normally I drive my S-Class or the car I have, and I currently don't have a car. So eventually I'm gonna get my own car and maybe put my purple Gallardo there, maybe my own Bugatti one day, you know, in the garage, never touch it until I drive it like on a Saturday or Sunday, or maybe just take it every day. I don't know. You never really know. Um, one thing I'm gonna change, I broke that yesterday or two days ago, getting the flooring machine in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the door right here because this area here to me serves no purpose other than to just mess some shit up. All right, there we go. Look at all that. Oh my gosh. No more travertine. Oh, all my crowd, my stuff's dirty. The plastic's falling down. I need to fix that. That looks fun. Really fun in there. Well, living in a war zone, that's what you call that. There you go, wow. I mean, it looks pretty nice to be honest with you. I like the openness and not having any furniture. Um, outside, we, we put all the furniture outside, covered it all up, and it's safe. Pool's looking clean. Got my little robot pool cleaner out there. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm really digging it. So I did have some ideas to change the kitchen, to put some stuff and move the cabinets. But I think what I'm going to do is not do any of that right now. And I'm going to just put the new flooring in, which I wish I had the sample here. I can't show it to you because it's actually so like the, 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 the it's porcelain. It is so freaking big. They can't even move it from the warehouse to here without getting a custom truck and all this crazy stuff. So it's it's pretty epic it's a lot of things are changing here but i'm just kind of inching this place along i mean eventually i probably won't even sell my house anymore but eventually you know there is going to be a time where i'm going to move on and this is going to be one badass mansion mm -hmm.